Many Americans aren't aware of this, but in Germany, we follow a lot of American pop culture and even politics pretty closely, which is why there really aren't a lot of huge surprises for us when we travel to this country. But turns out we don't know everything, because when I first moved here, there were still things that I hadn't seen coming at all. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Feli, I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. And this is part two in my video series about things that shocked me about the US. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I'm gonna link that up here and in the info box below. And to those of you who have seen it and maybe even commented on it, I wanted to say that I really appreciated that the comment section was full of mature and well thought out comments and discussions rather than things like, if you don't like it here, go back home to Germany or other hateful comments, despite the fact that I did address some pretty heavy and intimate topics in that video and was rather critical about the US, or at least about those three topics. And I would love it if we could keep it like that for this video too, because as I said last time, when I criticize certain aspects about the US as a country or its culture, it doesn't mean that I hate the US or that I don't enjoy living here. It simply means that there are some aspects that I don't love things that I disagree with and things that I might think Germany or other countries do better. But I don't love Germany unconditionally either. The world isn't just black and white and it's okay and important to criticize and discuss things that seem problematic in order to improve things and maintain a public dialogue, which is a crucial element in a democratic system, by the way. With that being said, here are the next two points from my list of things that straight up shocked me when I first came to the US, because even even though I knew quite a lot about this country and its culture and had been here as a tourist before, these were things that I simply wasn't aware of and didn't expect to encounter here. Please keep in mind that these are my personal experiences and views on things based on my perspective growing up in Germany, but everyone has different experiences. And I would love for you to share yours in the comments below if you want to. My first point for today has to do with parenting. Now, I'm not trying to tell anyone how to raise their kids, but in Germany, disciplining children with corporal punishment, so spanking, for example, is not only outdated and very uncommon, but even illegal. So to me, coming from a culture where I would probably call the authorities if I saw someone spank or otherwise physically hurt their child, it was very shocking and almost disturbing to find out that here in the US, that is still a pretty common and overall socially accepted parenting method. I first found out about this from some of my American friends when they talked about their childhood and things like being spanked by their parents, but later it even happened in my environment or came up in conversations with friends who are parents themselves. And looking at the numbers, the difference is pretty clear. While in Germany, corporal punishment has been illegal in schools since the 1970s and 80s, depending on the Bundesland, and at home since the year 2000, it's legal in all 50 states of the US to this day when done at home, and 19 of 50 states even still allow it in schools most of those states being in the south of the country. A survey from 2008 showed that about 85% of Americans have been physically punished by their parents during childhood or adolescence, and numbers from 2012 show that about 70% of Americans agree that, quote, it's sometimes necessary to discipline a child with a good hard spanking. The prevalence and the acceptance of corporal punishment vary throughout American society and can be linked to factors like religious beliefs, regional differences, socioeconomic status, and other factors. According to the reports, the most common form of corporal punishment is spanking on the butt with an open hand, but about 25% of parents also reported using an object, such as a wooden spoon. When it comes to my personal experience in Germany, I don't remember ever witnessing or hearing a friend talk about being spanked by their parents. Which doesn't mean that it didn't happen, of course, but at least in my social environment, that was never really a topic. And from my personal experience, I would also say that corporal punishment is considered pretty unacceptable in Germany and has been for decades. Even my parents didn't grow up with that. They said that in school, getting hit on the fingers still happened occasionally, but spanking wasn't a common thing, neither in school nor at home. When looking at the German statistics, I found a study from 2012 that says that about 40% of parents give their children a klaps auf den Po, which could 
could probably be translated with just one spank or a pat on the butt, but only 4% of parents use Hinternversohlen, so spanking to discipline their children. About 10% slap their children. Now, I'm not quite sure how those two categories of Klaps auf den Po and Hinternversohlen can be compared to the American numbers, but either way, it seems to be much less common in Germany. What's interesting is that the pat on the butt is less common in former East Germany because East Germans didn't experience that as much in their own childhood. Regarding the acceptance of corporal punishment in Germany, the study showed that all ass people condemn flogging, Stockhebe, 95% condemn spanking, and 74% of parents that did hit their kids, so three quarters, said that they felt guilty about it afterwards. 90% do agree with the German law from the year 2000 that grants all children the right to a non-violent upbringing. Laws like these exist in many other European countries as well, by the way. Now, as I said, I'm not trying to judge anyone here, and since most of my viewers are from the US, I'm sure that many of you were raised with corporal punishment too and hopefully turned out fine and maybe even raise your own children like this too but I personally don't believe that violence solves anything, like ever, so I would never use corporal punishment on my own children. I believe that trust is the most important part of a relationship, especially between parents and children, and according to data from all around the world, corporal punishment actually leads to higher levels of behavioral problems that carry on into adulthood instead of reducing them. This includes aggression, mental health and self-esteem problems, as well as academic problems in school. A study from 2018 using data from 88 countries also found that youth are less violent in countries where corporal punishment is banned. So overall, it's more harmful than helpful. Another parenting method that I had never heard about before I came to the US is having your mouth washed out with soap. That's also something that seems to be fairly common in some families here. Some of my American friends have told me that growing up, their parents would put a little bit of soap in their mouth when they used curse words, for example. We do use the expression den Mund mit Seife auswaschen in German too, but I've never heard of anyone actually doing that in Germany, or at least in my generation, and I'm pretty sure that would be considered child abuse. I'm gonna link a few articles and all of the statistics that I've mentioned in the info box below. I also came across an article in the German media about Kelly Clarkson from a few years ago where apparently she said in a talk show that she used corporal punishment on her children and German media was very shocked by that. So all of that is gonna be in the info box below. But of course, I also wanna know what are your experiences with this topic? Where are you from? And did you grow up with corporal punishment? And do you use it with your own children? And if you're German, have you had different experiences than what I just described? Let me know in the comments below. Before we get to the second point on my list, I wanted to talk about my everyday life here in the US for a second, because whenever I don't make YouTube videos about cultural differences, I just live a normal everyday life here. That includes things like taking care of the household, going to the store, going on walks, working out. And one of my most loyal companions through all of this, besides Ben, of course, are these guys, my everyday earbuds from Raycon. You already know that I love these because they're the first earbuds that don't fall out of my small ears when I laugh or move too much or fall asleep with them like I did on my flight back from Munich the other week. They're shaped so that they perfectly fit into that curvature of your ear. And on top of that, you can customize them with the different size gel tips. I usually go with the smallest ones. They just recently optimized those even more, by the way, to guarantee that perfect in-ear fit. And they don't only fit great, they also come with an amazing sound quality and different sound profiles. So if you hold the left button down for three seconds, you can change between pure sound, which is perfect for audiobooks or podcasts, which I listen to a lot, balanced sound, which is great when you listen to music genres like jazz, rock, or pop, because it gives you that all around performance, warmth, and depth. Or you can pick the bass sound for all of your bass heavy hip hop, R&B, or EDM songs. If you hold the right button down for three seconds, you can turn it from noise isolation to awareness mode, which is a feature I use all the time because it allows you to better hear your surroundings. So that's what I do when I'm out on a walk. And these earbuds are also super durable. You can even use them in the rain. And if you accidentally put them in the washer with your pants, 
they'll survive it, which would never happen to me, of course. The best thing about them is their preis leistungsverhältnis as we say in German. So the value for money ratio, because you get high quality earbuds for only half the price of other premium audio brands. They have eight hours of playtime, a 32 hour battery life, which lasts forever. They're Siri and Alexa compatible, and they have over 49,000 five-star reviews. And you can even get an extra 15% off right now if you buy them through my link in the info box below or go to buyraycon.com slash Feli from Germany. My second point today has to do with privacy and data protection or the lack thereof. Now you have to know that Germany as a country and society places a whole lot of value on privacy and data protection, Datenschutz in German. We have countless laws and regulations about which personal data can be saved by the government and private businesses, how long it can be stored for and how it can be used. But I'm not gonna get into all the legal details here. That will be way too complicated and pretty boring probably. All you have to know is that sharing personal data with strangers or institutions is a pretty sensitive topic for many Germans. Probably also due to the fact that our country has experienced firsthand what it's like when personal data gets in the wrong hands and is used to monitor, persecute, imprison, and in the worst case, even murder people like it happened in the Third Reich or in the GDR. So growing up with the internet and the rise of social media, German parents and teachers would always tell us to be super careful about what you share on the internet. Like, don't share your address, of course, don't ever use your full name, and don't even tell people when you're on vacation. And I remember that when getting any kind of advertisement in the mail or as an email from a company that you didn't share your data with, it was normal to be upset about your data being shared with a third party. You can even see our love for privacy when you look at Germany on Google Street View, which, surprise, started a huge data protection debate in Germany when it first came around. You'll find that Countless houses are blurred on German Street View upon request of the residents. And since Google encountered so many obstacles with their service in Germany, they haven't collected any new images in over 10 years in most parts of the country. So knowing where I come from, maybe you can understand that I was pretty shocked about how carelessly many Americans share personal information on social media and about the amount of spam that I receive via email, mail and phone every single day. Spam calls aren't really a thing in Germany. If anything, you might get called by some call center doing a survey every now and then, and that's more common on landlines than on cell phones. But here in the US, it's normal to get spam calls all the time. For me, it's pretty much every day by companies that have some kind of information about, let's say your car insurance or warranty and want to offer you a better deal than the one you already have, or scam places that are trying to access your utility accounts or get your credit card information, all kinds of things really. So it's become normal to me that unless I'm expecting a call, I don't answer any calls by unknown numbers because they're usually spam. And I also get a lot of spam mail, physical mail, such as credit card offers, insurance offers. And as soon as I bought the house, I suddenly received nothing but coupons and vouchers from furnishing places, contractors addressing me as a new homeowner and businesses and institutions in the neighborhood introducing themselves without me making that information about the house purchase or even moving public anywhere. And I didn't approve of my data being shared either. A common way how companies here collect your personal data is when you're looking for offers and quotes for let's say some kind of insurance or even things like an internet provider or TV cable plan. That's something that I find super annoying here because in Germany, you can usually just go ahead and compare different prices and services online and get all the information you need to decide which business you want to go with. But in the US, it's common that they don't make the prices available online, but instead make you fill out a form with your personal information, usually including your phone number and or email address to then give you a personalized quote. Let me tell you, as soon as you fill that out, your phone starts ringing and you'll be bombarded with text messages too. And it's usually not just the place that you actually gave your information to, but other businesses as well. Just to give you an example, I looked into American health insurance plans about three years ago and still to this day get text messages and calls from places I've never been in touch with wanting to offer me health insurance. You can also see a pretty big difference in how Germans and Americans approach data protection when you look at how people in the two countries use social media. Now this is going to be somewhat of a generalization because of course this varies from person to person and from generation to generation, but overall Americans are 
a lot more open when it comes to sharing personal photos and information on the internet. When Facebook first came around, a lot of Germans were very hesitant to use their real first and last name, for example, and would use some kind of pseudonym instead. While I don't remember seeing a lot of Americans doing that when I went on my high school exchange in 2010. And even today, I still see a lot of American friends and often their parents, that's actually a very active generation in that regard, share all kinds of photos from their daily life, vacations, and even their family, including children. While many Germans hardly share any photos of their life at all and are especially careful when it comes to the privacy of their children. It's common that people either don't show any photos of their babies and kids at all, or when they do, at least don't show their faces. So people will share pictures of the baby's foot, for example, or only show their kids from behind or actively censor their faces by putting some kind of emojis on top of it, which is something that I don't remember ever seeing an American friend of mine do. And while the baby boomer generation in the US seems to be very active on social media, especially Facebook, that's actually the generation that in Germany seems to be the most careful. My parents, for example, don't want to be shown anywhere on social media. Even before I had a bigger following, I wasn't allowed to show them in a post or even just in an Instagram story on my private profiles. And when Ben came to Germany with me for the first time last summer and wanted to fly his drone at Starnberger See, which is a beautiful lake just south of Munich, it didn't take five minutes before someone came up to us and told us that we couldn't fly the drone there because we could be filming him and he didn't give us his approval for that. Which legally, he does have that right because in Germany, it's not allowed to take photos of a person without their permission. But all I was thinking in that moment was just how typically German that was and how uptight everyone is when it comes to being filmed or photographed. Even though, of course, we didn't want to fly the drone to film him in particular or anyone else at the lake for that matter, we just wanted to film ourselves and get a cool view from above the lake, but that's Germans for you. So to tie this back in with the topic of being shocked, Coming from the data protection environment in Germany, it was pretty shocking to me to see how many Americans just shared all of their family photos online and even their addresses and phone numbers, and how my personal data seemed to just be passed around from company to company without my consent. Now, I did actually have a third point prepared for this video because as I said last time, I have a pretty long list of things that shocked me in the US. But since this video has already gotten pretty long and that third point is a pretty sensitive topic that does require me to go into detail a little, I'm just gonna address that in the next video. On that note, I actually posted a poll in the community tab last night, but maybe you can just tell me here in the comments too. Do you prefer list videos where I mentioned several points in one video, such as three things that shocked me about the US, or should I just turn this into a mini series like I did with my Random Differences series in 2020 or the Ask a German series last winter and dedicate one shorter video to each of these points. Let me know what you prefer in the comments below. I would love your input. And of course, also feel free to share your experiences and opinions on the two topics I addressed today. I would love to read those. If you haven't seen it yet, check out my last video about the eight best German Netflix productions that you should check out. And no, you don't need to speak German for that. And we also did an update on Ben's German learning progress in that video. And he did the challenge that you guys chose for him, which was cooking a German meal based on a German recipe. So if you want to see how that turned out, click right here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button for free. And if you would like to support me and my channel beyond that, you can do so on Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or by clicking the super thanks button underneath the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!